What's going on guys, Vic will be back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be going full force, full detail on this beautiful 50 inch Star Trek virtual pinball machine. Stay tuned, I'm going to talk your ear off. I, I, don't, I forgot what he said, but stay tuned. <laughs> Alright guys, you know, Joe, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. If you did follow me, you would have seen all the journeys, all the lifelong journeys. You would have even seen me participating in a local pinball tournament. Shout out to Pinball Long Island. Again, if you're not following me, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. It's in the link tree. What are you waiting for? Right now, I had the machine completely turned off because I turned it off in the last video. Now I'm turning it back on, we're going to do it live, we're going to let the machine boot up and such and let it do its thing. If you saw the last video, you might understand why this is in my hand. It's because of that right there, we actually turned the power off to show you I need that to be always on. I right now again with Pin Up Popper, it is set to launch after 30 seconds. So Dolphins will do its thing as you can see and very soon we will be up and running. Man, there is a lot, a lot to talk about with this. We're in, we're good. Again, Dolphins right now, still taking a little bit of a second to connect to pinup, but basically once you see like the front right there lit, if I hit the flipper, we're in. I'm gonna keep going real quick. I'm gonna put this Chevron back in its place. It is magnetic. Uh, it's very cool. It kind of just takes like a little bit of a trial and error. As you can see, I lost it there. It takes like trial and error to get it like in its right space, but let's see if I can do it on camera. Don't embarrass me right now, please. Whee! Cool, awesome. So there's a lot to discuss with this pin. Again, this is why I make this separate video because I'm gonna talk your ear off. We're gonna talk about the customer himself. We're gonna definitely be going in depth on the artwork. Uh, I'm gonna show you like my version that I created and then obviously we went with the customer's version. There's just a lot to talk about. I have it like all bottled up in my brain. I wanna make sure I word vomited out correctly. Let's talk about the topper real quick because we just started with that, okay? Customer supplied that topper. That topper is awesome. It's beautiful. It's honestly, it's difficult to even know what it's like capable of or how it functions until you actually purchase it, get it in your hands and then actually put it on the machine. That topper is very cool. You might be seeing this video and if you are and you're confused as to why that little magnetic piece was in my hand, that means you didn't watch the overview video. You should. That topper is very cool. I have a very big feeling though, the customer is gonna nudge this table and it will kind of cap, you know, it'll hit the magnet. Right now, as you can see, I actually gave it a good nudge and it's not even doing it, but it's kind of like an on and off thing. I didn't think that was a thing. Not to mention, I didn't even know that you need power for that to have the levitating feature. If I kill the power, the magnet will like, the, honestly the chevron will fall, but I could put it to the magnet. But as far as like that floating feature, it actually needs to be powered on. Now again, it is an awesome topper. Right where you are, that's kind of like your eye level. That is what you see gaming wise. It's a very unique piece. I like where you are because I mentioned in the first video and I'll mention it again here, that topper, I had to make its own special stand. It's actually on a piece of wood that is removable. I told the customer you could remove it because once I got this all set, he actually messaged me, he's like, hey, Vic man, can you measure this cabinet real quick? This cabinet right now, where it is, and granted though, I do have the leg levelers on the legs. You could remove the legs to drop it down, but the way this sits right now, it's about 83 to 83.5 inches tall. And apparently where he is going to put this, if he only has like 82 inches of open space. Um, he was like, oh my God, Vic, it's not going to fit. I'm, I'm like, listen, I'm pretty sure you'll make it fit. Uh, he even made a joke. He's like, if I have to notch out a, a hole in the wall on the ceiling, I'll do it. But there's a reason why I have it that height. I'm going to explain why and then I'll take it off the stand and it'll actually drop it down. I would say, I will, I'll make it official. But the big thing if you notice with that topper, the bottom here, it actually says the word Star Trek. 
And it kind of sucks because of the placement on it. I kind of wish it was at the top. But to make sure you could see the word Star Trek, I had to make its custom stand. So that's why it is high. All I'm going to take off the stand, I'll actually probably raise you up. I'll put you in my hands because my, my tripod can't get that high. Um, I'm going to take it off the stand. I'll give you a close-up view of the actual, you know, topper. And uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like without the stand. So to make my life easy, I'm going to take the chevron off. I'm going to take the stand off. And that now, we're going to put the chevron back. Again, it's like a, it's like a game to get it like really, you got to get it dead center. But that right now is what it looks like without the stand. If I put you back where we were, it's cool. You can still see the chevron, but that right there, that is the stand I made. I'll take a quick measurement. This stand is an inch and three quarters tall. Again, I specifically have this stand because I wanted to see the Star Trek logo on the bottom. And as you can see right now, you could bear, I'm pretty sure where you are, you could see Spot's head. Yes, you can. You just can't see the Star Trek logo, not to mention you're kind of missing the bottom of the Chevron. But again, this right here is an inch and three quarters. He's like short an inch. So again, no, I have a feeling that he could take the leg levers off. I'm not, I'm not too worried about that, but that's the little journey we had with the topper. Now, some of you don't really understand like the complexity. This is like, you can see I have its own separate pigtail here. There was a lot of play to go with this top right here. So it's in my hand right here. And like I said, I have no power to this, but the magnet still works for the top. It's stuck though. Basically like the levitating magnet on the bottom, it needs power. It's just kind of crazy that like you see this and there was a lot of work to get this to work properly. Let me take it to the back now because we're going to talk about the separate power input I had to run just to make sure that this works correctly. So if you saw the Hogwarts Magical Pinball and all my other pinball machines, there's really only three things here on the left. Again, I have my dock switch here, so if he wants to do some night gaming, you can turn off the solenoids, the shaker, the knocker, all that is here. This one here is for the LED matrixes, so if you don't, if they're like distracting like I think they are, you can always turn them off. Then you have your main power to the cabinet. Inside, I have two power strips. There's a lot of plugs. People just don't understand the wiring that's in this. There's, you got your LE, you got your, uh, your DMD, you got your back glass, you have also the play field, you have the PC. That's four plugs alone. We're not even including like the power supplies, the amps power supplies, the speed. There's so many plugs to it. So when I originally wired this, I had this on its own power supply, but connected on the inside in like the outlet. I had an outlet, a space in the outlet, and I plugged in the power that this came in. Sure enough, one night, like when I turned off the power, I heard the magnet hit this. And as you can see in the last video, it actually would fall. You have a chance of it just falling and <laughs> falling onto the floor. So then I realized, oh crap, I have to give this its own power. It has to be permanently powered on. So with my little experience with gun for IR and all the cabinets I've done, I use the barrel connector there. This is the actual stock connector that came with this. And basically you have your permanent power. So he could have everything here, but once he turns off the power, which you have to do, when it comes to virtual pinball, when you're done playing it, turn it off. Once you actually hit the PC power button, the PC is off, turn this switch off. If you do not, your TV will turn off after 10 minutes. The TV has to be on while you turn it off. This way it automatically powers on. Same thing goes for the back glass, the 32 inch back glass and the DMD. Basically, if you leave the, if you leave it on and all of a sudden the screen's going to like sleep mode, when you power back on, they will not turn on once power is given like I have it set up. All in all, this topper is fun. It is gorgeous. I just have a feeling that the customer 
It's going to experience what I experienced where if you sometimes are very deep into pinball and you're nudging, you may hit the magnet. Which isn't a big deal, it's just kind of a game to get it like centered. You can actually feel like the force of it and you get it. It's awesome. Not to mention this topper, the plug area here, it's such, it's in a weird spot. So I had the pigtail here and then down to the stand. But all in all, it is definitely a very cool feature. Would I recommend it for anybody else's build? Probably not. Only because again, this magnet, it's, it's iffy. Nobody, I mean me, I wouldn't think of it. I'm pretty sure the customer wouldn't think of it as like, oh my God, you know, I didn't realize that all the nudging is gonna make this kind of like almost fall off. So again, it's definitely cool though. Don't get me wrong, don't, don't take it as a negative. It is, it is, it's awesome. It's, it's definitely like an eye, it's the, it's the cherry. It's the cherry on the top. So last comment about that topper, right? I made its own stand and I thought it through. Like I said, the customer said, hey Vic, on its stand, I might not be able to fit it where I wanted it to go. So luckily that stand I made, it's just a let, it's, it's just its own thing. I didn't glue it to the cabinet. I didn't glue it to the actual like memorabilia piece. Not to mention he also has a certificate of authenticity, which I will give him all that. It is awesome. I think it's, I think it's cool, but you have that little situation where if you're going crazy on pinball and nudging, it might just kind of catch the magnet, but all in all awesome stuff. Let's start with some basics real quick. This, just like Project Canada, the customer supplied everything. Everything. The customer supplied everything. I only supplied the wooden for the cabinet, the vinyl artwork, and then obviously I did the wiring and the PC configurations. I have two options. I could go out, which you're gonna see in the next one coming up here. I could supply you everything. There's a price for that. Or, you could supply me everything and then I build with your stuff. That is what we did here. Again, I like to offer that. It's great that I offer that because you as a customer can realize how much this stuff costs. Again, I get it, I get it, I get it, but the amount of emails I get and people's like wauga eyes when I mention the price, if I do everything, people just don't understand the cost. And what's great, and I mentioned it in Project Canada's video, this customer was going back and forth. He told me he spent around, I would say 4,500 to five grand. From when I made that video with Project Canada, we didn't have the extra amp, the extra Dayton audios, the extra LED whiz, the extra Sane Smart board. There was a lot of stuff that we didn't have yet, the LED rings and such. So I like that. I like that people could actually see it for themselves and go, oh shit, wow, hardware alone costs. That's what it is. And like I said in the last video, you'd be surprised the emails I get. People think this right here is a two or three thousand dollar machine and I just face palm so hard and uh, you know, just trying to explain that somebody is just physically impossible. It's, it's just impossible. Now, again, the customer supplied everything, but we dealt with a couple of hurdles and hoops and hurdles, I would say. Not in a bad way. Customer is an awesome dude, but I'm gonna talk about like the PC. He bought a PC, it was a pre-built PC from MSI, awesome stuff, but when I received it, we noticed one thing that I wasn't a fan of and neither was he, and also he upgraded the GPU that came with it. Let's talk about the PC now real quick. If you didn't see the overview video again, i7, 16 gigs of RAM. This one specifically has a two terabyte M.2 SSD and an additional one terabyte SSD. You might be saying, Vic, why, why do you have this additional SSD? That is because his pre-built came with a one terabyte SSD. A big thing to note, it came with a standard SSD, not to mention, it was like a no, I don't wanna say no name brand SSD. It is a brand that I don't, I, I don't even, like it's, it's, it's a brand that, uh, what, is, what is the brand? It has like a bird. Uh, it's not a Western Digital, it's not a Samsung, it's not a Crucial. It, it, you know, I sent it to him, I said, hey, just give me a heads up, man, this PC, it has a terabyte SSD, it's not an M.2 and he's like, I don't understand. I thought it had an M.2 and I'm like, mm, well, what do you want to do? 
So he basically said, I'm gonna send you out a two terabyte M.2 SSD. So basically he has three terabytes in this. So again, when it comes to that, there's stuff to think about. You wanna supply the PC, that's great. You know, I don't know if it advertised an M.2 SSD, but an M.2 versus a regular SSD, they are great, don't get me wrong. You know, you wanna to try to compare it to a hard disk drive and HDD. I personally like my M.2s in all my builds, Virtual Pimmel or Arcade, he was just kind of surprised that this pre-built from MSI didn't come with an M.2. And I said, well, I show him pictures and this is what it is. Now, another note about that pre-built, he had a 2070 Super in it. So I don't know how much you pay for the PC, but it had a 2070 Super. Me personally, I would probably aim for a 3060 Ti as a minimum here. I, on my personal build, I had a 2070 Super. And you're talking recently in January and February, I upgraded it to a 3070. He then went and got a separate graphics card. He went extra and actually bought a 3080. Now the big thing when he got that 3080 and he sent it to me, I opened up the box and I got this. I have never heard of this company. This is a Pel Pel Peladon? P-E-L-A-O-N or A-D-N? Peladon. It's a 3080. This came from Newegg. I never heard of this company. The customer said, hey, Vic man, do me a favor. Open it, put it in my PC, and run a bunch of ten uh, test benches. And I said, okay, that's fine. So he does have like extra programs. He does have Steam, which I usually don't put on this. But because of the test bench, you needed Steam. He can always delete that when he gets it. But he did ask me, hey, Vic man, open it. Be sure it's a real 3080 and then put it through the test benches. So there was work to get it. Me personally on my end, listen, it works. Uh, I don't know how much he spent on it. I don't know how much it is, but it did turn out to be a legit 3080. Yes, I had to spend a couple of days test benching it. I actually, you know, left the computer on for about, I would say a day, which I usually don't like to do, but I left the computer on, let it do its test benches and that's what it is, that's, that's probably fine. In this box is the original 2070, he is getting that. I don't keep that stuff. That is all yours, you could sell his graphics card. But all in all, solid stuff. You just gotta keep in mind though, and I don't wanna sound, I don't wanna say this and sound like a dick, but you know, swap, for example, let's take the SSDs for example. I'm not the type that clones, I wiped. So that original SSD, I put in basically the two terabyte M.2, and I reinstall all the drivers and such, and then I install back in that three terabyte. You know, I basically wipe that three, that one terabyte, and then I basically just wipe it. So what am I getting at? Time. It takes time to do that. And yes, time is money. Swapping out a graphics card, you might think it's like a five minute thing. Cool, that's fine if you think about it, but we have to also download drivers. You have to also keep in mind cable management and such. So. Not, you know, it's nothing bad, it's just I want to give you the heads up. So again, customers supplying everything, but we decided to do some work to get everything kind of situated. So now let's talk about the displays. Again, customers supplying everything. Big shout out to him though, because without him, I would not even know that there is a 50 inch, 120 hertz display, let alone QNED. There are so many displays out in the world now, you got OLED. QLED, QNED, Vic, which display is what? I do have a comparison video coming up with this versus the OLED. They are both beautiful, gorgeous displays. And again, I have this 50 inch in my personal pin. So again, shout out to the customer because without him, I wouldn't even know it. He, I guess he bought it from Best Buy. One day I woke up and outside he goes, hey Vic, Best Buy delivered the TV. And I said, okay, cool. And I got it. So again, he supplied everything. Same thing with the 32 inch ViewSonic. I have this on my personal build. I love the ViewSonic because of its virtually bezel-less bezel. There's no bezel to it. As far as the 17 inch DMD, this is an actual laptop display. I will open up the rear, we're gonna take a look at that. That has an actual like LVDS encoder board thing, almost like what you see with the Arcade 1UP stuff. This right here is awesome, the 17 inch screen. It is beautiful and there it's all beautiful. It's honestly it's amazing. Not to mention again, if you are inquiring about a virtual pinball machine now, I would not go any lower than 120 hertz. It's just I, I wouldn't give you a 60 hertz 
Seeing this, it's a game changer. With that, there is a price to pay for these displays. Let's talk about the back box here real quick because you're there, you have a good shot of it. There is a couple of things going on here that I've never done before. And there's some things that I have done, such as, for example, the beacons. I love the beacons. These are like your traditional rotary beacons. Inside of them is a halogen bulb. You do hear the motor. Like, that's what I like. I like hearing that. You hear that motor. I just, I love, I love the aesthetic on this. The big thing when it comes to this area here, those beacons, they have such a fat base and it's just ugly. So I purposely put them behind the actual 32 inch screen. This way you don't see the actual base. So the actual ledge that's holding this is like right here behind the TV. You might not see it. You definitely don't see it, but in case you wanted to understand the, my thoughts and you know me, I'm a, I want to say I'm the word perfectionist. Uh, I don't like seeing the bases on that. Now let's go into the actual DMD here. This was a challenge. This, this tested me. Um, one thing, I never did it before, we do have the Stern style DMD. Awesome. I've done, my personal pin is just a speaker, kind of like the speakers here. I could have convert, I could convert mine to a Stern style. Basically what makes this the Stern style, if you look up a Stern pin, such as Godzilla or Foo Fighters, um, you could see basically this kind of hexagonal mesh. Stern, I don't know if they do it now, they might give you LEDs. I don't know if it comes stock or a lot of people are modding them, but usually you see the LEDs there. What's very funny and what's very cool, the customer saw the Harry Potter Hogwarts pin video and he did hear my comment about like, I'm not a fan of actual visual LEDs. If you go back to that video, you'll see that there was no white screen or plexiglass in front of that. He hit me up, he goes, hey big man, you're right. Can we do something about that? I took it to the test. I took a piece of plexiglass, spray painted it white, and boom, there you have it. We now have our nice little stern cover here. So you no longer see in direct view LEDs. I mentioned it in the other video, like I said, and you're gonna see when we go into the LED matrix. I do not like seeing the actual LEDs. I don't like seeing it. I can't stand it. I, I cannot stand this. This is just, I hate it. Now somebody made a comment, you could buy black. This is black, this is the black strip. But you will still see that white LED. I can't, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. That's just me, I don't like it. So luckily we have all the paint and all that and spray paint to hide all that. And I think the white came out cool. The next thing, which I can't wait, I'm gonna show it to you now because we're talking about it, is this, the five flasher RGB flasher bar. Customer told me he wanted it. I knew it. But then it's like, once you start building, I was like, oh my God, where are we gonna, <laughs> where am I putting this? Where am I gonna put this? I can't, some people put it actually inside the pin above the screen, but we now have the LED matrix. I was originally gonna put it up top here, or I was actually gonna put it underneath the DMD, but it's just, it's difficult. The big thing that you can't see is I, I the, the, the actual back, this, this TV right here, that bezel and the LED, it is no joke, like a millimeter off. It's, it's not, it's barely touching. There is so much to it. It's, it's insane. It's, it's, it's mind boggling. So I found on eBay a person that has these clear domes. These domes actually have two tabs on the, on the sides of them. I actually had to break them out. I took a Dremel and actually sanded it down. These are not glued in. You basically could wiggle it out. The vinyl is actually holding this in. You can actually see it there. The tab is out, but look at that. If you look behind in the rear, there is no room for error on that. It is, it's just, it's beautiful. So again, RGB, this has its own like special LED puck thing. Wiring for that is a huge, oh, I'm gonna show you the wiring, but you might be able to see it there. There is basically an RGB. I had to put um, resistors on every channel. So R, G, B, and the power. There is four resistors on each LED. I'm telling you, I've never done this before. 
It is, it's beautiful though, can't lie. Luckily with this dome, it's not like directly in your face. And as you can see there, the vinyl is basically holding it in place. That's not going anywhere. I could hot glue them down, but I, there's no need for it. There's no need, it, it sits there, it's perfect, it's awesome. But wait until I show you the rear. Now, like I said, with the rear, I don't have any screws here. That is just how tight it is. I have my little holes here for ventilation, but you could put your thumbs there, pull back, and reveal. I do have to clean this up a little bit, but I'm going to show you and take you in close to show you those RGB flashes. Just take a quick note because this is the thing people don't understand. RGB is three, that's three channels. That is three channels on the LED Wiz. On that LED Wiz, you have to set it for five channels. So it's basically like left outer, left center, right, right outer, okay? What am I getting at? You're looking at right here, it is 16 ports on the LED Wiz. 16 ports. That means I have 16 wires from the front, which is where my LED Wiz is located, coming up and then right here inside the cabinet, I have those um, blocks, like the terminal blocks, this whole section here is just for the RGB flashers. It is insane. Let me take you closer now. So now you can take a look real quick. Each one here, right here, you could barely see it. That is a resistor right here times four. So basically what I did is that I have individual resistors. I made little holes. You can see the actual drill hole. Resistor comes through the wood right at the edge using these LED matrix style connectors here. And look, I had to label it five, four, three, two, and one. So like I said, all this, this right here, this right here, as you can see, there's three RGB. I have four wires, but I'm only utilizing three of the four. One is a uh, five volts direct, and then they're daisy chained out. So you can see the five volt daisy chain. It is just insane. Now also, if you ever needed to take off the DMD, and it's again, more planning, you know, that I do, you have the option to disconnect all the flashers and such. There is so much, but you could just see right here alone, there is 16 wires just for the flashers. And again, I bear, can you see that? Let me see if you can see that, let me see. I gotta put my flashlight on, so check this out right here. This right here is the wood, that right there is the TV. Look at that, that is the TV, that is the actual backlash TV, and that is the wood. Now also keep in mind, I'll take you into the front. The front of this wood is covering the actual bezel. So just wanna, I wanna just point that out. That is precision. Again, you can kind of see the actual resistor there. Uh, just, you can see it here. Can you see my finger? Yeah, you can see that resistor right there. Awesome. So now again, like you see here, again, I have this piece of wood right here. That's where like that line was. This piece of wood is actually like, um, it's chiseled out to cover the bezel. So the TV, it really ends like right here. Right where honestly that, uh, that puck is. So the TV is probably like right, no, it's like right here. That's where the TV is. Again, no room for error. It was a challenge, but it came out amazing. So now I got you back here because I wanna show the customer also in case he doesn't like those white panels I made you could take them off, but it's also kind of cool for you to see like, there's a lot of details that are going on. I still have to clean up the wiring a little bit, but there's really not much cleaning up that you could do. This right here is like all the wires. These are permanently like locked in here. Basically coming from the cabinet is this one big Molex connector, and then this one connection here. Aside from that, you also have your power and HDMI to the back glass, power and HDMI to the actual LED 17-inch uh, LCD laptop monitor. So there's so much you could do, but the real reason I'm bringing you back here is that I wanna show off the actual way you can remove this speaker. And again, quick disconnects. There's a lot of planning going on. So I have everything set up where in case you, have to, you wanna remove something or if something breaks, I have it where you could always disconnect. So we have that right there. That is to the LED ring. And then we have here the actual audio. And now I could pull this panel off and we are free. It's just detail, man. That is that. You ain't getting that for two grand. <laughs>
But check it out. So this was the original layout. This is how, if you look at the Hogwarts pin, this is what it's what he saw. And then you actually saw, you didn't really see it, but at an angle, you could actually see the individual LEDs. But as you can see, we have the plexiglass right there. Now, if the customer wants to remove the plexiglass, you have to just kind of pull out the LEDs here and then you from the front could push through. So those are removable. The only thing that kind of sucks in this situation is that I'm gonna glue it down, but I can't really totally glue it down because if he wants to pull off, as you can see, see it's good. If he wants to pull out the, the actual white, you have to remove the LEDs. But again, little details, you can see the quick disconnects. I have this also set up where like, you can't mix this one up with that one. It's just a lot of planning that goes on. And basically now, and again, if he wants to remove the actual wood to the DMD, I have another screw here and a screw here. Those two come out and this will just push out. But also remember, you have to disconnect all of this stuff and all that. So we have the LED matrix there. I can now put this back. I have it nice tucked away. Look at that. Boom. It tucks in. Awesome. We're going to make sure that our LED here is good. And we plan. So we got this. I normally would suggest you don't do this with the power on. But boom. We're back in action. Awesome. Since you guys are there, take a look real quick. You could see that I don't like to see this beacon here. That's got that fat base. I hate it. You could kind of see now that TV versus the base. You can see how low it is. And also check it out. You have the knocker here. So again, 49 volts right here. And again, it strikes the wood directly. It's own power connection. Quick connects here in case he ever blows this out or if it ever dies or whatever. You can always disconnect and replace. So we're gonna take a look at the rear now, the PC area here. We're gonna take away the panel there. And as you can see, you have the PC here. On the left where you are right there, you can kind of see it. We do have the uh, shaker motor kind of power knob. Uh, so I have it set to low. If he wants to bump it up, you can always raise and lower it and such. Uh, let me bring you, I'm gonna put you in my hands so you can see the amps and the extra amp that we put in for that base thump. So now taking a look, we have up above here, this is the front exciters, that's for SSF. This is the rear exciter there. And then on the right side here, you have this puck here, that's the Z533. That on the bottom does have its own sub woofer kind of volume knob. It's kind of like a little switch thing. But right there, that red light, that is a separate pile amp for the actual base. So there is a volume knob either on the bottom or the top. And yeah, a lot going on here. And again, this is set up where you could take this piece off. This right here is keeping this piece down, the PC down. Entirely, there's little lips here. You can see how I have it here, see that? This piece of wood is held over and holding in the shelf. But you could basically take out this piece if you ever has to work on the PC. This piece comes out and then the whole PC slides out. And then when you're going to put it back in, just make sure there's no wires in the way. And then you could slide back and you're good. Now I'm going to make a quick point of this because Project Canada also realized it. No matter how much ventilation you have, these three fans are actually bringing air in. But the rear of the PC, that's sucking the air back. I personally, on my pin and also Project Canada took the door panel off, I would leave this panel open. Um, it's just something that I would I would do. Uh, it gets hot in here. Not to mention again, don't I don't really advise you to leave these on 24/7. I'm the type where you should turn it on when you're gonna play. Turn it off when you're done playing. But for me personally, I would rather you have this door panel off. I could put 10, 15 fans, but it's just kind of better to have like this this here. I was even gonna put a, a fan on the door. But now you got wires and if you want to take the door panel off, you got to worry about disconnects. There's so much to it. Me personally, I would rather have this wide open. That's how I have my personal pin. Uh, on my pin, actually, the whole base is wide open. Uh, but nothing to worry about with the, the, the actual PC. His PC, Project Canada, and all of them are also water-cooled. So, there you go. But all in all, solid stuff. Just got to do some basic wiring cleanup. But again, you can't clean up too much. For example, if he was gonna remove the TV, let's say he's gonna work on it, he's gonna take out that 50 inch TV. I don't want this like bolted down and tight or else you might risk, you know, pulling it out. He would actually remove the HDMI from the actual TV itself. But, you know, what am I getting at? Basically like right here with the back box, 
you need this slack for the HDMI and the power. Uh, I would rather have the slack in the back box than dangling inside the cabinet. That's just me, but either way, you will have wires. <laughs> there is wires and there is a shitload of wires. Now let's talk about the actual play field itself, the actual cabinet, because there is two things I want to talk about. I want to talk about the actual TV itself, because there's a couple of key things about it. And I also want to talk about the actual side rails and the lockdown bar. If you saw the Hogwarts pin, you may notice that the side rails and the lockdown bar are a little bit smaller than what you see here. This right here, I determined the size of the side rails and the lockdown bar based on the TV. I made a comment about this. The 50 inch QNED on the bottom, it has a 1.5 inch bezel, including the TV sensor. That is big, it's, that's, that's pretty big, okay? That also translates to me now needing to add 1.5 inches to the top to make sure that the TV is centered. Also keep in mind the wood. The wood is 0.75 inches. So the side rails is designed to cover up the wood, obviously. And in this case, cover up the bezel. That bezel, honestly, on this side here, you don't see it luckily because of the side rail. You, If I took the side rails out, you're going to see a gap. A big gap so this side rail right here is saving that actual visual to it okay this right now this side rail here from this edge to the inside I have this as 1.75 inches so it doesn't cover the entire bezel that I need because it's really 2.25 you don't need to cover the entire thing but my main thing was to make sure that if I'm standing over it I want to make sure that I do not see that gap it came out beautiful. Shout out Eric, Big E Productions. I sent them all the dimensions that I needed and it came out amazing. Lockdown bar is almost the same dimension as um, Project Canada's. I just went a little bit bigger because to put your fingers in, not to mention this TV, it was a different kind of size. It does have a minor bezel. Uh, unlike the C2, it's bezel-less. This has a tiny bezel on the edge, so I had to go a little bit deeper to make sure that we cover the bezel, but all in all, beautiful. So now real quick, I'm gonna turn the lights off in a second, but I just wanna show you where you are. This is why it's important with these side rails. Behind that LED strip and this LED strip, there is about, I would say, yeah, I would think it's at least about a quarter to maybe half of an inch of a gap. That's why I said the side rails gotta cover it and it looks great. Let me turn off the lights. Again, you can't even really see it. You could see the LEDs bouncing off the sidewall, but behind that LED strip, there is a minor gap. So again, that's why it's important that these side rails cover that gap, especially here. If I'm on this end here, and I didn't want to look down and see an empty void, it's a very big eyesore. This just looks great. It, it came out awesome, it looks perfect. So now let's talk about the LED matrices, the side rails, and the speaker grills real quick. Like I said before, I'm not a fan of the actual visual LED. So I do have the rails, the plexiglass covering the rails spray painted, and I made its own custom plexi here. It looks awesome. If you've seen, especially the LED matrix, if you've seen the matrix without anything covering, it is bright. Yes, inside of r you're gonna adjust the brightness, but again, just seeing bare LED is, is god awful. And again, you can see here, I do have the LED ring in the middle, which is great because of this white plexiglass that I did, you don't see it eye on. It's not like, again, if you wanna see what it looked like, you saw it before when I showed you on the speaker. I just don't like visual LEDs and neither did the customer. I think it looks great. So again, we have the outer edge here, that's one zone. We have the actual speaker ring, that's a second zone. Same thing here, outer is a third zone, and then the speaker ring is a fourth zone. So as you can see, depending on how it's coded, you know, as far as these here, that's what I noticed, it's not exact, but in game, it's great. It's, I think it's just my popper uh, stuff, especially like I said, with that fifth flasher, but all in all, LED matrices look great. And like I said, I do have a kill switch just like that in case, you know, you don't want it anymore. I do have the kill switch there. So on and off, you can also see now let's talk about the artwork on this, then we'll do some gameplay. I'll try to fill in any little missing details if I'm missing anything. But 
Artwork is artwork. Uh, it's always a journey. <laughs> I, I have like a love-hate relationship when it comes to artwork. It's it's tedious. That's the big thing that some people don't really realize. It's, it's tedious. Not to mention you, the customer, you have to supply me the images or I could help find images like Project Canada. We basically work together. Same thing in this situation here. Uh, I always like it. I always love it. I always tell customers, listen, whether it takes me a week, two weeks, three weeks, it's never taken me three weeks, but no matter how long it takes for artwork, I want to make sure that you're happy with it. That is like the key to it. It is your cabinet. So let's make sure the end result is exactly what you want. Every customer is always the same. They kind of send me like 30 or 40 images and it's kind of funny because sometimes we use all the images, sometimes we only use one. And sometimes we use none of them. So it's always funny, but again, you supply me the actual images or I could help you out like I did with Project Canada. Even in this situation, we kind of helped each other out uh, and we figure out whatever you want. I originally, when I first got the email and I tell customers, you know, especially in this situation, it's easier to give me one single email with direct links to where you're getting these images from. I honestly, you do need high resolution images, which is what we're gonna talk about with this situation here. This cabinet is unique. Again, customer wanted this design, he picked these images and he's happy with it. That is the end result. When I first started, I always start with the side. Like I always start with the side. I never do back box. I feel like the side, everything has to translate from the side you know, up. So originally like it was late, I get to do artwork like late at night. I had a vision. I did like one thing and I'll show you real quick what I came up with. Um, using some of the images that he sent me, like you could see like the border and all that, that was like the version that I came up with and I thought it was cool. And the big thing that I have to keep in mind is that I thought it was cool. The customer did not like that version. He was like, nope, I, I don't like it. And that's a okay. That's perfectly fine. I'm the type where like, let me at least try something because you never know. like. What I like, maybe you may like too, but in this situation, it was a hard, it was a no. It wasn't a hard no. It was like, no, Vic, I appreciate it, but no. This is a very cool idea on artwork. Again, I am not a Star Trek fan. I, I, don't, I don't know Star Trek. Uh, Customer is trying to educate me. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how much is going to stick, but I appreciate, you know, the education on it. So on this, like I said, this right here, this panel here is like, a certain generation or the OG, he's gonna definitely watch this. He's like, Vic, you're freaking you're fucking butchering it. <laughs> this is not what I said. I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna reiterate it. But this right here is a certain like version. This is like the TV show version, and I call it like the OG version. You know, Spock, this is like the original. This is how it started. And it's a great idea. I love it. He has the Enterprise. And we were going back and forth. I had done a couple of different things where it was like the Enterprise and then another thing uh, flying with the end. Like there was a lot, there was a lot of artwork. I'm telling you, there was a lot of links and stuff. But the end result is amazing. I just like to, I'm gonna word vomit right now. This way some people, they could understand the actual process that goes into artwork. So it's pretty cool. The side panel here you can see is actually one image. It's just one image. And sometimes, that one image is all you need. I was giving him like five images on one. It was like, it just didn't look good. He loves this and honestly, what's the word? I don't know what the phrase is, but like keeping it simple. That is beautiful. I love this panel. This right here, I love it. He luckily found a very high resolution image. I love it. Let's talk about the back box real quick, okay? Now, I don't know when this show aired or whatever, but you gotta keep in mind that this is before 4K, 8K, 300 plus DPI was a thing. What am I getting at? He actually found like fairly good high resolution images from the actual show. And the big thing when it comes to artwork is that some people may see pixelation. That's like my job to make sure that you could at least understand like, hey, this picture, this image that you got, it may come out fuzzy on a final print. Honestly, all this, it looks amazing. This is perfect. This right here, like this image here, you may see like a little bit of pixelation, but from afar, like where you are, you're probably like, I don't see it, Vic. What are you talking about? It's just, I have to educate customers. I got to tell people and give them the heads up. Like, you know, some people like me right here, I'm okay with this. But like, if I'm here, 
hey Vic, I could see like the squares and uh, you know, you would have to literally be making out with them to see it. But it's just something that people don't really understand or get. This customer understood it though. He goes, Vic man, I understand. This is an old show. He is getting images from like the actual like show. It works out. Let's talk about the other side. So now let's talk about this side panel here. Like I said before, and I might be wrong. I'm trying to, I have bad memory. Uh, but again, this side here is the OG Star Trek team. And then I believe this one is the newer gen. Uh, I don't remember if it was show or a movie, um, but he was very fixated. He loved this specific image of the Enterprise. This right here actually came from a clip. Uh, he went to the extent of even sending me YouTube links to try to screen grab specific like seconds from the YouTube clip. It partially worked. Basically what I did is that I would actually download the YouTube clip I would put it inside of Premiere and then I could screen grab it to like the highest resolution that I could get it at. He also went to the extent he got his buddy involved. His buddy actually gave him like the blue, he had the Blu-ray disc and actually like scanned it somehow and got the image and there was a whole thing going on for this image and a couple other images, but he loved this image. Now the one thing about this image though is that it's taken from like an action shot. like. I think it's like zooming in. So in all brutal honesty, this image, it is a little pixelated. And I told the customer that even on my computer before we printed it, I said, hey man, I'm just gonna give you the heads up. In my eyes, it's pixelated. But again, it's something where you have to be up against it. I'm gonna take you in closer to see it. So to alleviate that, we also had a backup plan and he approved it. Just to be safe, we had a secondary image made Yes, this is vinyl. Yes, he did pay for this vinyl. We did have a secondary image made just in case that image did not turn out the way he liked slash if it was too pixelated. I also like this so people could see. Yes, this is vinyl. This is what I apply to my cabinets. I apply the vinyl. You'd be surprised that people just don't. Yes, he is gonna take this with him. He had to spend an extra couple to get this. This is not a $20 piece of vinyl. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not crazy, but it is a very big piece. But yes, he does that. He basically has two side panels. He is gonna make use of it though. He said he's gonna put it on his wall. And it was basically like, hey Vic man, you know what? Get my camera died. But basically he was saying, Vic man, listen, let's get both. And it's gonna be kind of like, let's get it in your hands and visually see, you know, which image is better if that was if that one was too pixelated, we at least had a backup. So no harm, no foul, it's not a waste. He said he's gonna put it on his wall and that's pretty cool, it's awesome. I'm gonna take you in closer. Again, where you are right now, it's not pixelated. And even in person, you would see the pixelation if you put your face like five inches away from it. So I lowered the camera, I zoomed you in. Again, I'm aiming for like this area here. And this area here was a very big deal. Um, it looks great. Like I said, it looks awesome. If I'm like here, then I'll see the pixelation. I'm talking so much like, man, this is a waste of my, it's, it's not really a waste. It's just, I like to make sure customers understand that like, you know, this is from a movie slash video. It's an action shot. It's difficult to get this as crisp and clear, but it looks awesome. It looks great. Customer loves it. He wanted this and he got it. We can talk about the side panel here. Same thing. This is an actual image from like the film. Doing a Google search, this is like the highest res image. It looks great. Minor, very, very minor like pixelation, but it looks great. As far as the bottom here, it was nearly impossible. I'm going to say it's impossible to find these two characters, Spock and whoever this is. I'm sorry. Um, he's got, yo, I'm, I can already tell he's typing in the chat. He's texting me now like, Victor, <laughs> again, I'm sorry. Um, but it's very difficult to find these, like it, this has like a background to it and it was difficult. Same thing with like the girl, luckily I was able to remove the background of the girl, but all in all, solid. So there's the artwork. This again is the back box here. We basically have the very big Chevron. Uh, that is the one, num one thing I remembered. Uh, it's awesome. Like I said, you could faintly see the galaxy in the background of this. And I basically put the same galaxy image on the actual D&D panel.
So we'll do some gameplay real quick. I already played a bunch of Star Trek tables. Right now, the bye week, we are playing Diner. If you don't know about it, you can see my video on the QR code challenge. Whether you're a customer or a viewer or anybody, you could join in on the fun. All these right here with Popper, I do give all my customers the QR codes already set and configured. We are again right now playing Diner. Uh, definitely having some fun. By the time this video goes out, it will be a different table. But I'll explain the QR code stuff real quick. Basically, you scan the QR code. I'm going to show you where it is. It's actually on the play field. You take out your phone, you scan the QR code, and then you can upload your score. It's very cool. So I have QR codes on all VPX tables. So it's over 300 tables. As you can see, it's always on the bottom right. Almost like how real Stearns have like the QR thing there. Basically, you take out your camera phone, you take out the camera, and you just kind of hover over and a link will pop up. You don't actually take a picture of it. You kind of scan it, you press the link, and then you're able to upload your name and your score and you have to upload a picture. Very cool, it's an awesome way for everybody to engage. Right now, Project Canada and I and a couple other people are playing Diner. Uh, I haven't checked recently, but I think I still hold the high score for Diner. Basically, once you upload your high score, you can see all the tables here. Let's go to Diner. I haven't checked in a while. Let's see who is holding. I'm still first place with 32 mils. So you can see that, and we have two others playing along. It's pretty cool. You can also see other people playing other tables. It's just a fun little thing to do. So again, that's already set up and configured and such. So I always play in the dark in the garage because the lights and the glare and the glass, it's always a pain in the ass. But again, we're playing some diner. Depending on where you download the tables from, some of them have LUTs. So hitting the magnet saves on this specific table will change the LUT. Not all the tables will do that. Again, it depends on where you download the table and stuff. But let's play some diner. We'll put some coins in. And do some dying time. Again, analog plunger. Awesome, beautiful with that potentiometer slider. There's your skill shot. Again, you can watch my live streams. I play this now. And they said every two weeks we play a table. There you go. We got the multiplier. Awesome. It's beautiful. Nice. Today's special. This is a fun table. I'm having fun with it so far. And we got extra ball. Woo! There we go. Awesome, man. Love it, love it, love it. There you go with that nudge. So again, I'll even try to catch the ball. Yeah. There's your water. Yeah. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> I want to capture the balls to show you the tilt. But again, KL25Z right in front. This way you're nudging your tilt. It's very accurate. It's very good. So look, we got that extra ball. You could also use the launch ball button for the plunger. So we'll do that. Oh, I missed my skill shot. I just want to capture the ball. We'll show off the nudge. There we go. Let's bring it in close. So as you can see, I can do a little nudge. It's, it's like I said, you could adjust the sensitivity on it. It's awesome. And I, as I, if I push it, I could, you can see it's going vertical. I can go sideways with it. And I tilt it. <laughs> there you go, there's your tilt. Tilt, awesome. So we'll navigate real quick. If I hit the red button, it exits out. I'm right now in my recent, so I can bring it back. We can do another game real quick. As you can see the navigation, I won't give you tables. You have to download the tables and such. Uh, I do want to play this. I was actually playing at the uh, at the pinball place by me, which is Pinball Long Island. They had Earthshaker here. Beautiful table. I'm going to most likely do this for the next bi-week table. It's a very fun table uh, that I played. So as you can see, Loading on up, you have to supply the tables. I do not give you the tables and such. And as you can see, Earth Shaker is launched and ready to go. Again, I have volume low, holding that blue button. Do I have to insert coins? I most likely have to, yes. Here we go. Earth Shaker is a great table to show off the shaker motor. Uh, it, it shakes the house. There we go, we already lost the ball. <laughs> 
But honestly, awesome system, virtual pinball. It's great, it's a lot of fun, not to mention you have all these tables. Tis a beautiful site, honestly. Tis beautiful. Oh, I even nudged. <laughs> awesome. Well, there you guys have it. Another virtual pinball machine in the books. The 50 inch QNED Star Trek virtual pinball machine. I'm gonna make one more video for the customer, basically a guide on how to get everything kind of assembled and such. Keep in mind the back boxes here, these are, this is a whole separate piece. This comes off totally. Real pins, they have like the arm and they kind of hinge. I'm not a fan of that because the hinge is it's a very big piece. Um, but yeah, this is two separate pieces here. I'm not sure if I'll make that video live, but uh, maybe I will. This way in case you're a customer thinking about a virtual pinball machine. It's not, it's not a headache, it's not difficult. It's just a couple of steps. You wanna make sure that this is secured. You definitely wanna make sure all the connections in the rear are connected, especially when it comes to the DMD and the uh, back glass HDMIs. You wanna make sure all that is connected. I will, the customer will call me and we'll be on the phone and we'll most likely FaceTime each other like I do with Project Canada. Um, we wanna make sure everything is connected before you even power. Don't even give it power until you call me. But on that note, VicVP, Game Case Arcades, put it in the books. Another V-Pin DAP. Woo! Stay tuned, we got one more, and then we're moving back onto some arcades and shooters and touchscreens and killing it. <laughs>